by the FBI yesterday in Boston. It did have uh, what law enforcement sources describe as very useful information. Uh, that car has been linked to people who boarded one of the flights out of Boston that was indeed hijacked. Uh, but again, uh, nothing solid to go on, just useful positive information was the quote given to me. Uh, we, are, we are progressing here, but this is something that uh, could take months, if not years, to solve. Uh, uh, that last point is a good one. I mean, at, at, at one level, we see this flurry of activity, uh, we, and we wonder what it all means. We, it's police now coming out, this SWAT team in Boston coming out of the Weston Copley Hotel. As I look uh, at our monitor, we, we see a fair number of officers coming out. We do not see, or we can't see, and it's possible that you can see this more clearly than I. Uh, whether they are bringing anyone out with them, but it doesn't look like it to me. It, they're coming out quite slowly. They went into the building quite slowly. They did not evacuate the area. Uh, and as you saw, there were dozens, if not hundreds, of people who had gathered around the hotel and had not been moved back by this SWAT team. No police line had been set up. Fair amount of milling around in front of the hotel. Uh, but if they found something or someone, it is not, uh, uh, it is not apparent to us as we look at the pictures with you. George DeWilliger is uh, familiar with these sort of security operations. I believe he's in our Washington bureau. Uh, Mr. DeWilliger, can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine. Tell me what, what you see, what you know, and what you think right now. Well, I think <clears throat> what these uh, act police activities and uh, law enforcement uh, activities show is that the investigation to determine who is responsible for these cowardly acts is, is progressing and, and progressing nicely. The uh, fact of the matter is though that the object of all of this is not to arrest people and bring them to trial and charge them uh, with crimes, even though that may happen. If there are people here who supported this operation and were involved in it, co-conspirators, there may be prosecutions. But the real objective here, I believe, has to be to fix responsibility in the big picture sense with pe persons overseas who sponsored, directed, um, and basically uh, commissioned because those uh, are the people. These crimes. Those are the people who uh, ultimately the government wants to get, wants to punish, wants to put out of business. Well, that's exactly right, but it's more than punishment. The put out of business part is critical. What we have here, what's been demonstrated to us, is that there is a fundamental threat to the security of the United States that is represented by the activity that took place yesterday. The job of government, the core function of government, is to provide for the security of the country, and that threat has to be neutralized. Uh, Mr. Twilliger, let me, I, I, this is slightly off point, I apologize. But I wonder, sir, if other groups, and there probably aren't very many in the world, but there are a few, will be emboldened by what this one group was able to pull off. That's very possible. Um, but I think that uh, we have to be very careful not to um, overreact to this and forget about the other types of threats that we know are also out there. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, of uh, frankly, some bloviating, if you will, uh, well, we should have concentrated on this kind of terrorism rather than uh, the threat of, uh, of bioweapons or chemical weapons. Well, the fact is we have to worry about all of this. Um, the, what we really need to concentrate on is gathering good intelligence. The best defense against terrorism is good information, knowing that something's going to happen before it occurs. And in order to, to have that good intelligence, we need to loosen some of the restraints on our law enforcement and intelligence agencies, not to the deprivation of civil liberties, but if it means some marginal surrender of privacy interests, I think some of the people that in the past have taken a very doctrinaire approach to that need to take a more reasonable approach. We can have a free society, a free country, and our civil liberties, and we can have effective law enforcement and intelligence agencies. And, and, and Mr. Twilliger, do you want to weigh in uh, uh, briefly on this discussion that has been going on, this debate that's been going on for the last 36 hours or almost, on whether we have spent too much of our energy and money on high-tech intelligence and not nearly enough on spies, on human intelligence? Well, again, I think it's not an either-or proposition. There is no substitute 
for human intelligence. Uh, the technological intelligence uh, methods that, that uh, we have available to us are extremely valuable, and they're well worth the money that we spend on them. But human intelligence down at the street level, particularly in the United States, to infiltrate groups, uh, to penetrate them with undercover operatives and other sources, uh, to allow the intelligence community to do the same thing overseas is critical. And uh, I, I feel quite confident that uh, both domestically and in the intelligence community, we will look at new opportunities to, to do that and undertake that kind of activity. I wonder, sir, if you might just uh, stay with us for a little bit as, uh, as we sort of sort through some of this law enforcement activity, which as I look at uh, the pictures coming from WCVB, our affiliate in Boston, seems to be winding down. They have certainly moved a lot of people away from the front of the hotel. It was quite, honestly, quite an odd scene that you had a major SWAT team operation, uh, police officers going in with bulletproof vests, uh, this, the description from reporters on the scene, guns drawn, uh, heavy weapons drawn, and yet the area immediately in front of the hotel had not been cleared away at all. We saw a big EMS vehicle there, and then dozens of Bostonians standing around watching it all. Uh, a well, few moments ago, uh, we saw uh, some members of the SWAT team, perhaps all of them, we're not sure, uh, exit the hotel. Uh, whether they found what they were looking for, we don't know. Well, I'm sure we'll learn more, but one thing to keep in mind is there, there's a great deal of unknowns here. And if uh, someone was going to be arrested uh, or even uh, interrogated uh, in, a, uh, in a consensual way, perhaps uh, the police just don't know exactly what the circumstances that they might face. And in that circumstance, uh, it is a standard tactic, I've been involved in these cases before, uh, to utilize an overwhelming show of force, both not just for the security of the officers, but also for the security of people in the area. That scene, uh, just to uh, help orient our viewers that they saw just a moment ago, that was about 30 minutes ago, I believe, guys correct me if I'm wrong here, of the officers, the SWAT team, rather calmly walking in to the hotel. Um, they did whatever business they intended to do, and then they got out. A number of helicopters uh, overhead right now. That is That is the noise that you're hearing. Uh, we're about five or six blocks away from the from the World Trade Center location, and it continues to be a very, very busy scene. Mr. Twilliger, thank you. Let me go to Lou Waters, who is uh, at CNN Center in Atlanta. Lou. All right, Aaron. The uh, Taliban of Afghanistan has been meeting as it uh, had been rather intensely yesterday meeting and responding to reporters' questions, trying to deflect any accusations of its involvement uh, with uh, Osama bin Laden or the attack on the World Trade Towers or the Pentagon. We have Nick Robertson by video uh, phone from Kabul in Afghanistan, the capital, uh, where uh, Taliban officials have been meeting. He has the latest developments from there. Nick. Well, Lou, big developments here late this afternoon. CNN reported a few hours ago that senior Pakistani diplomats were meeting with senior Taliban officials now, Pakistan is one of the only three countries in the world to recognize the Taliban as the rightful leaders of Afghanistan. And Pakistan is widely regarded as one of the only countries that can have influence with the Taliban leadership. Now, CNN has learned that the, that the Pakistani diplomat was asked to pass a message to the Taliban leadership. We have also learned that that meeting uh, concluded inconclusively diplomatic language, but not a positive outcome. What happened after that? Almost immediately, we received a call from the senior Taliban spokesman, Abdul Hai Mutmain, with a new message from the Taliban, again condemning the attack in the United States, calling it a sad humanitarian catastrophe, saying that they had the sympathy of the people of the United States. But going beyond any Taliban statement so far, he said they appealed to the United States not to attack Afghanistan. They said the people of Afghanistan are already in a great deal of misery. They said that killing the leaders of the Taliban in Afghanistan, they said, would not help the people of Afghanistan. He went on to say that any attack on Afghanistan would cause resentment within the region that would be a negative thing. He also talked about Osama bin Laden. He said Osama bin Laden had a following of the people. He said that the 
press record of Osama bin Laden, often attributed things to him that were perhaps weren't relevant. This, all this message, all this statement wrapped up by the final line appealing to the United States, saying they hope that sanity prevails in the United States. Now, putting together the diplomatic jigsaw that's happened here, Lou, a failed diplomatic meeting with senior Taliban officials where an international message was passed to the Taliban. The Taliban shortly afterwards then releasing a statement appealing to the United States not to attack Afghanistan, not to kill its leaders, to think seriously about the consequences of any action in this region, and the Taliban saying they hope sanity in the United States prevails. Lou? Uh, Nick, as you uh, know, the United States has appealed to Afghanistan a number of times to extradite Osama bin Laden to the United States uh, for uh, prosecution in connection with the wor first World Trade Center bombing and the uh, bombings of the U.S. embassies in uh, Kenya and Tanzania. Do you know if there's been any further attempts by the United States to ask for that extradition and what the answer to that might have been. Lou, one of the questions we had for our diplomatic sources today was what was in that message that was passed by the Pakistani official to the Taliban official. Uh, we could not get any comment on what that message was. We only know that it was delivered and that the message was, the meeting was, in quote, inconclusive. Um, it is highly likely that in any scenario regarding uh, talks, international talk with the Taliban, the issue of Osama bin Laden would come up. The United Nations has placed sanctions on uh, the Taliban for failing to hand over Osama bin Laden as requested. United Nations today pulled out all its international staff from Afghanistan. It's done this at times of high tension before, but a key difference today when the United Nations staff pulled out, the last of them to leave early tomorrow morning, when they pulled out today, they paid off all their local staff. They took their computer software disks, and unusually, they took a lot of their hard copy key documents as well with them loose. Nick Robinson on the ground in the capital of Afghanistan, Kabul, where uh, the Taliban has been meeting and has again con uh, condemned yesterday's terrorist attacks in the United States and has pleaded with the United States of America not to attack its country. Natalie? And there were, of course, four ill-fated flights yesterday uh, that ended in disaster. One of those flights landed in Pennsylvania, crashed in Pennsylvania, Somerset County. It was a United Airlines Flight 93 out of Newark, New Jersey. Its intended destination was San Francisco. Of course, it never made it. Uh, sometime when it was turning back toward the east to a destination unknown, it did crash. We have from the location CNN's Brian Cabell. He's there along with so many investigators trying to put the pieces together to what happened with this one. Brian, what can you tell us? Well, Natalie, the recovery operation is well underway right now. We're told there are 80 investigators out in a field about a half mile behind me, combing those fields, mapping and greeting the fields, and starting to pick up some of the debris. But we have been warned that what they are finding is very small, tiny in some cases. We're talking about both debris and human remains. There were 45 people on board this plane. The largest piece, we were told by one official, was a part of a jet engine. Of course, the top priority right now is to find the black box. The FBI official who talked to us about an hour ago said they had not yet found it. They had not heard a beacon from it yet. That was not especially promising. And Congressman John Murtha, who is from this area, spoke to us a couple of hours ago. He said he spoke to some searchers earlier today, and he said they were pessimistic about finding the black box. I personally think that uh, this black box in this incident could be a key because I think personally there was a struggle in that airplane before it hit the ground, and uh, somebody made a heroic effort to keep that from uh, hitting uh, uh, a populated area. Congressman Murtha also mentioned that he noticed in the last month or so increased security around the Pentagon and also at two U.S. military installations outside of D.C. He's not sure what to attribute that to. As for the scene here, as I say, it's about a half mile behind me. We're told it's a three-mile perimeter. There's a crater in the middle of it, eight, by eight to ten feet deep, we've been told. And the search, we're told, may take between three and five weeks. The big question remaining here, of course, Natalie, is where was this plane going? It left Newark around 8 a.m. 
went to the Cleveland airspace, turned around, came back east. They thought it might go into Pittsburgh, thought it might go into Johnstown, a little bit north of here, but then ended up in a field, as I say, in rural Somerset County. The question is, was there a fight on the plane? Did someone deliberately turn this plane down into this field? I'm Brian Cabell, CNN Live in Shanghai.